Okay, let's talk about cardiac physiology. How can we describe the function of the heart as a pump? Uh, the mechanical function of the heart can be described um, through a graph. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to draw it for me? Sure, so it, it's a pressure volume graph. Mm -hmm. So looking at the ventricular volume down here in mils, um, starting with the um, end systolic volume and the end diastolic volume, mm -hmm. and then the um, ventricular pressure in millimetres of mercury up here with about 120, 80, and then zero. Okay. And so starting at the end diastolic volume, uh, we go, we, the graph vertically ascends through isovolumetric uh, contraction okay, okay. until the aortic valve opens, and then you get the ejection of the stroke volume, and then the aortic valve closes, and then you get uh, isovolumetric relaxation mm -hmm. um, until the mitral valve opens mm -hmm. and you get uh, diastole. Okay, so what kind of parameters can be derived from this pressure volume loop? Um, so you can derive the stroke volume as the difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. Right. Um, you can derive those two items as well, the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. Okay. And then because it's a pressure volume curve, the area within the curve represents the stroke work. Okay, so what's the, do you know what's the function of the heart based on? Um, it's based on the cardiac muscle. Okay. Are you aware of any important concept that describes the performance of the cardiac muscle? Um, I think it was Frank that initially looked at the, um, uh, the relationship between the initial fibre length uh -huh. and the tension that developed in that during contraction. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, and uh, so why do we, we in, in medicine, we always talk about Frank's Stalin curve, and you say just Frank, how, how are they different? Um, so this was Frank's initial work, and then um, Starling looked at it in a clinical context, mm -hmm. so m changing the parameters that he looked at from uh, the effect of um, end the uh, central venous pressure, so filling pressure, comparing it to the effect on stroke volume. Okay. So you see a similar shaped curve, but also um, there are events that can change the shape of the curve and okay. move it around. So on this x-axis, what other parameters can we put instead of the central venous pressure? Because it represents the filling pressure, you could substitute this with the end diastolic pressure, mm -hmm. the end diastolic volume, and also the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Okay. What are the conditions that will push this curve, uh, that will sort of shift it to the descending part? Um, so this is seen when the um, heart muscle, um, the heart the ventricle becomes uh, enlarged, mm -hmm. as is typically seen with um, dilated heart failure. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, you can also see it with um, poor environment for the heart muscle, such as hypoxia or acidosis. Okay. And any other medications will shift it? Um, giving beta blockers. Okay. And how can we improve, how can we shift it up, this curve? Um, so the, the reverse can be seen when, um, when patients are given inotropes or catecholamines. Okay. What do you understand by stroke volume? Um, stroke volume describes the volume of blood ejected from the left ventricle in one um, contraction okay. and it's represented by the um, end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. Okay, and what do we measure clinically normally? Um, we measure stroke volume and also the ejection fraction. Okay, and how are they different? Um, they, they represent a similar thing but the ejection fraction um, is calculated by dividing the stroke volume by the end diastolic volume and so you get a percentage. And what's the normal percentage? Um, 60 to 65. Okay. What do you understand by cardiac output? Um, cardiac output um, can be described by the equation stroke volume times heart rate. Okay. And how can we measure clinically the cardiac output? Um, there, the are, there are multiple ways of mm -hmm. measuring cardiac output. You can use um, PICO, LIDCO, um, pulmonary artery flotation catheter. Tell me about that one. Okay, um, the pulmonary artery flotation catheter um, describes a thermodilution technique where a cold saline bolus is injected at the proximal end of the catheter, okay. usually into the right atrium, right. 
and then the change in temperature is measured from that dilution um, at the thermistor, which is in the tip of the pulmonary artery okay. catheter in the pulmonary artery. And how do we derive cardiac output out of it? Um, using the uh, Stuart Hamilton modi modified Stuart Hamilton equation, um, the cardiac output is related to the area under the curve for thermodilution. Okay, thanks very much. We'll move on to another question. Thank you.